Is from a calico male bred to a lira female. Wow. And just um, would you say that this is something that they could start with with a, a small chondro, do you think? Yeah, so man, this this female is unbelievable. Wow. And the fact that she and then when Calico Jr. was made, mm. they said, man, it is it is the 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 replication of that calico look that the computer chondro had mm -hmm. so All right guys so we're joined with mark hagar from texas chondros what's up it's his episode on having a bit of a chat we're at bills today we're at the bar well at the the drink pre-party ah. pre-show party at bills um which has been epic so far hey narbc arlington starts tomorrow but tonight is the real party and this it. is where it all goes down here at bill's house we're looking at chondros we're getting out carpet pythons ball pythons all the stuff like you can't see a more epic collection than bill's phoenix reptiles yeah. you know so mark tell us before we because i can see you've got one of your productions here at bill's hey but before we get this out let's talk about a bit about a bit about you when you got into it and well we all know you love calico and you love yellow neos amen so let's talk Go, let me know how yeah you... yeah so bill and i actually got into chondros around the same time like mm -hmm. around 2010 2011 we started getting into green trees and uh man we haven't looked back since it's been great so bill and i have kind of like come up the ranks together and it's been awesome so i i typically work with the calico line uh, breeding for crazy colored chondros. And then I work with yellow neos trying to get them into those crazy colors uh, because I know that it's possible. So uh, earlier this summer, I actually traded Bill, one of my darkest red neos, which you can see right here. Uh, so this was from a calico male bred to a lira female wow and just really dark back on it really big bright diamonds uh definitely a incredible animal one of the holdbacks i had for the clutch and i told bill hey i'll trade you this for some yellow neos from your clutches and that's what we did of course so, he said yes he's a red man <laughs> yeah so you might call me crazy but I wholeheartedly believe that yellow neos hold as much potential as red neos if you give them the chance. And I am willing to stake my reputation on it. I'm yep. going to prove it to everyone here in uh, the next handful of years that I believe we can get yellow neos to the exact same state as red neos. And Bill's animals, his reds are phenomenal, but so are his yellows. I've seen people that have bought his yellows and they're unbelievable. For sure. I mean, dude, some of the Jaeger biscuit clutches, the mm -hmm. yellow neos are some of the standouts of those clutches yep. and so man it you know it all depends on the genetics of the parents the phenotype of the the animals that you're actually pairing mm -hmm. and you know and a little bit of luck and so if you do if you have great genetics you have great phenotypes and a little bit of luck man you can create some incredible stuff and what drove you into calico out of all things mark man because, because i've seen I have to say, before we met and before we spoke on Instagram and before I could do what I'm doing today, I actually saw your collection tour on Brian Barcheck's yeah. channel many, many years ago. So having you here in front of me, first of all, it just feels a bit surreal, but you guys have been absolutely lovely. Yeah. But what drove you in to Calico? Yeah. So first, let me say, Brian Barcheck is the real deal. Like, if you ever get a chance to hang out with him, take it. Like the the youtube personality comes off and man he is just the coolest guy with so much knowledge and yeah. so i i love brian i've known him for years and we still talk to this day he's awesome uh the calico green trees are just so fascinating to me because they look so far from the natural phenotype yeah. like my goal with green trees has always been create the wildest looking snakes possible and for me, I look at the Calico line as the pinnacle of that project to, to look as far from the natural phenotype as possible. The orange necks, the, the melanism, the, the pixelated coloring, 
for me, that just drives me wild. I love the the calico line and the look that it creates. Yeah. So I I got very lucky. I got into the calico line relatively early on, and I I've had some awesome calico animals um, from Mandango's line, from October's line, from Splash's wow. line, all within that calico tree. And my hope with the calico project is to take all the branches of that tree and put them back together to in-cross the calico line back to each other now that it's been out-crossed so yeah. far. And what, for anyone that doesn't know chondro as much, you know, the two names that really stick out to me, especially in calico line, is like the computer chondro and calico junior. Yeah. Um, what would your take be on those and, and you know, where, how did it start, you know? You know? Yeah, yeah, so computer chondro is the, was the very first, like, grandfather of that calico line mm -hmm. and computer chondro was bred to its sister aqua girl and they produced calico jr and so calico jr was uh the they they called the computer chondro the computer chondro because it looked like pixelated computer wow. screens and then when calico jr was made mm -hmm. they said man it is it is the 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 replication of that calico look that the computer chondro had mm -hmm. so uh trooper walsh greg maxwell uh greg really like spearheading and taking that project into what is now the calico line mm -hmm. um calico jr was bred i think three times uh to two different females so lemon girl and uh they bred Lemon Girl twice and Calico Jr. to, I'm blanking on it, I don't know. Uh, but regardless, anything that is of the Calico line mm -hmm. can trace its lineage back to Calico Jr., whose dad was Computer Chondro. So, uh, yeah, in Chondro's, Calico Gene is not a look, it's a line. And that line often has a particular look about it. So I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's that's kind of the. So for me, I haven't. I've got three animals that have got small percentage of calico. Yeah. So I've got lemon tree, calico, cross to Vinsky, and I've got three of those from that from that clutch. Would you say that I would now repeat sib to sib, or would I outcross further? But that would obviously dilute any hope of calico that I would have. Yeah, so the, the Calico line is also an offshoot of the Trooper Walsh blue line. Mm -hmm. So putting a Calico animal with a blue line animal, a Trooper Walsh blue line, would be an incredible pairing. Uh, a Calico animal with anything melanistic would be an incredible pairing. Uh, I think Calico to Calico is like the best. Now, granted, I want a little bit of separation in between, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the two calicos that I'm going to pair. But, man, e snakes are just so different where they're able to handle that genetic inbreeding uh, way better than mammals and uh, a lot of other animals. So uh, it depends on what you're going for. But, man, if you want crazy colored pixelated, wild, out of your imagination green trees, then I would say keep that calico line as close to some of the other designer lines as you can, because yeah. the results are going to be unbelievable. Yeah. And I can see, you know, Stephen and Ashley are here, and we're going to speak to them on a, on a separate episode in regards to Focus Cubed. But I can see that your production here is currently being kept in a Focus Cube setup. That's right. Now, for a new beginner, uh, that might be buying a chondro of a similar age, a similar size. You know, this little this little setup for me is beautiful. Um, would you say that this is something that they could start with with a a small chondro? Do you think? Yeah. So I I think this so this focus cube habitat is a twelve inch by twelve inch cube, and for me this is the absolute biggest enclosure that I would keep anything that's under a year maybe even a year and a half mm -hmm. in so until until you know this this snake could probably live in this 
12 inch by 12 inch enclosure until it's close to two years old. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a great starting point for someone who's getting a captive bred, like, you know, three, four month old neonate, five month old neonate mm -hmm. for those first year of keeping. Uh, I, I think it's a great option. It keeps super stable temperatures. The, the craftsmanship is obviously incredible. Stephen and Ashley Howdy do an incredible job just with everything Focus Cube Habitats. I don't know if they're available overseas, but not yet. Know, if they are, then uh, man, it's worth doing. Good luck getting it. Uh, but man, this this twelve inch by twelve inch cube is a great option for someone who doesn't necessarily want to keep their new green tree in a tub. Mm -hmm. uh, I get it. You can't see it as well. Like it feels a little. Um, just constrained in mm. a tub. Um, I think they do really well in tubs. I keep my babies in a tub for you know uh, the first about the first year of their mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. um, and they they thrive in that. And so I often recommend people keep them in tubs. But this twelve by twelve is a great option for someone who wants to have a viewing window into their neonate chondros world. And I would say, I've got two more things to ask you, Mark, today. Yeah. Is first, you've got an amazing page, Texas Chondros, where you know you shout out a lot of the Texas keepers and share their snakes. Yeah. Um, so where can people find you and what do you share and what can they look for? And also, what do you have available for people or do you not have anything? Let's talk a bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Texas Chondros, TX Chondros on Instagram. Uh, on there, I share any green tree that's here in the state of texas man i, I want to highlight the keepers of these incredible snakes and just show off all the awesome green tree pythons that are living in the state of texas so that's my goal with that so follow texas chondros you know check it out see what you like and when you see something you like reach out to those breeders Ask me, hey, who produced this? How do I get in touch with them? I would love to connect you with those breeders. Uh, for me personally, I produced two calico clutches this year. I do have neonates available from both clutches, probably about, I don't know, 10 or 12 that are still left for availability. I think that there is a crew that's getting stuff together for a shipment to Europe here soon. So if you are in Europe, Germany, France, UK, Spain, Portugal, wherever, uh, man, we would love to get some of this US blood over there. That would be a dream of mine to have snakes that, that I produce, that Bill produced, that Patrick produced, go over into Europe and thrive over there. Uh, so if you're interested in that, reach out to us. We can connect you with the people that are orchestrating that uh, that shipment over there. If you're here in the US, man, just reach out. We would love to talk to you. And even if I don't have anything that you want, I promise I know the people that do have the things that you want. So I'm not here just to rep my own stuff, man. I'm here to rep Texas and all my Contro friends all over the country, all over the world. So let me help you find the green tree that you want based on the look, the lineage, the locality that you desire. So you heard it here first, guys. Mark is here really building the community. Um, amazing person. Make sure you get in touch. And the finishing question is, Mark, and we don't have to see it because it's a busy house. Yeah. What snake is your favorite of Bill's? Oh, in here, the my favorite snake that is here in Bill's. I'm actually going to make it really easy. Um, so... A lot of guys that have been in chondros for a long time, uh, they know that having a female, an adult female that is not only genetically awesome, but phenotypically awesome. So they, they don't just have the genes, but they also look the part. Uh, a lot of females, they, they tend to not be as radical looking as the males mm -hmm. or they lose a lot of the color over time. But, uh, the outbreak this is a sickness line female that has maintained some of the most black from a female that i have known in a long time wow. so she's in shed right now but man this this female is unbelievable wow and 
the fact that she has this much melanism, that she is a female, and I believe this year uh, Bill is looking to breed and pair this female, uh, the results are going to be unbelievable. I'll tell you that right now. This is, this is going to be some next level stuff coming out of Texas, and you can quote me on that. So my favorite snake in the collection right now, because it's a female and it looks like this, it, it's almost a no-brainer that this would be towards the top. I want to say, Mark, I want to shake your hand if you can let go. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man. Thank you for the hospitality. Dude, you traveled all this way, man. The least we can do is put on a good time for you. So thanks for coming. Uh, thanks to everybody who's watching. And hopefully, uh, one of these days, Bill, myself, Patrick, we'll get over to the UK and we'll hang out with you, Sal. I can't wait. Now it's a wrap. We don't